For the following exercises, find the composition when f of x equals x squared plus 2 for all x is greater than or equal to 0 and g of x equals the square root of x minus 2. Okay, so let's start with the first one over here. The first thing is, is that I, me personally, I don't like this type of notation, so I always try to take it out of this notation and use the other composite function notation. So I'm going to start with that. So they want you to basically know what f of g of 6 is, and then they want you to know what g of f of 6 is. Okay, so let's start with the first one, right? We'll do f of g of 6. Okay, with composite functions, you always work from the inner function to the outer function. The inner function here is the g of 6. Inner. And the outer function is the f function, right? So, for the first part, we're only going to be working with g of 6. So let's see, I got to go to the g function over here. g of x was the square root of x minus 6, but for all x values, I'm plugging in a 6. So this would just be the square root of 6 minus 2. And now just do the math. g of 6 equals the square root of 4, which is the same thing as 2, right? Okay. Now for the next part, you're going to take that answer that you just got and use it for the outer function. And the outer function was f. So what number are you going to plug in? It's the one that you just solve for. You plug it in into the outer function and you just solve. So it would be f of 2. Okay, well the f function was x squared plus 2. That means that any time that you see an x value, there's only one, you're going to plug in 2 for it. So this would be 2 squared plus 2, and then just solve. So f of 2, which is the same thing as f of g of 6, would be 2 squared is 4, 4 plus 2 is 6, and that is the answer for the first part. Okay, I'm going to kind of go a little fast here because, you know, we're already on question whatever. I think we're almost at 90 um, if you're using the, the OpenStax textbooks. If you, if you want to see those textbooks, there's a link uh, in the description for all of the textbooks that, that have this, t this type of problem. Um, so let's go to the next one. We need to do g of f of 6 now. It's the opposite composite function. So let's start. The first thing that we got to do is do the inner function now. So that's f of 6. So I find the f function, x squared plus 2, plug it in. So this would now be 6 squared plus 2. So 6, 6 squared plus 2 is 36, plus 2 is 38. So f of 6 is 38. Actually, hold on. Yep, 38, because 6 times 6 is 36, plus 2 is 38. Okay. So now the second part is you use that number, and you plug it in for the outer function. And the outer function was g. So this would be g of 38. The g function is the square root of x minus 2. So it would be the square root of 38 minus 2, because you got to plug in that. 38 minus 2 is 36. The square root of 36 for g of 38 would just be 6. So let me just put that in and just know that this equals g of f of 6. And this all equals 6. Okay, so in this case, we have two different composite functions. However, the answers are the same. So let's see if that is the case for this as well. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull these notations out. So they're basically looking for g of f of a, and then we want f of g of a. Now, there's a trick here because we're using the same functions as what we did before. So we can kind of cheat a little bit. Not really cheating, it's just using, you know, using our noggin to find connections. Now, look in what happened here. Do you see how 
you plugged in a number. In this case, we plugged in six. So what do you think we got out? Look at what we got out at the end. You think that's a coincidence? I don't think so. We plugged in six and we got out six. So whatever we plug in, we get coming out. Now we're plugging in A. So what do you think the answer would be? I think it would be A, right? If you guys wanted to do the math and plug in all your X's for A's, you would probably get the same thing, right? And if you want to do the math, you know, show it in the, in the comments and we'll, we'll talk about it. But it's the same exact I think. Same exact idea. We put in sixes here and we got out sixes at the end. That's not a coincidence. So I can just shoot all the way to the end. I can say G of F of A, which is the same thing as, you know, if you wanted to say G composed with F at A, would just be A. And that's the answer to the first part. And then what about the second part? F of G of A, which is the same thing as F composed with G at A, would be A. There you go. And let's see if we can make that assumption for the next part. Oh, yeah, look. I mean, 11, 11. 6, 6, coming back out as a 6 and a 6. So same exact idea. What do you think the answer is going to be here? I'm going to say for the first part, well, first, let's just write that, you know, they wanted F of G of 11, and then they wanted G of F at 11. So for the first part, F of G of 11, what do you think? Well, that equals F of G at 11. And that equals, you got it, 11. There you go. We did all the hard work in the beginning. And then we just make that connection. And now let's just do it again for the other one. G of F of 11 which is the same thing as G composed with F at 11, would be equal to 11. And there you go. Pretty cool, right? Um, but like always, if you want to put in the math in the comments below, we can talk about it and see whether you get it the same answer or a different answer. All right. But as far as that goes, I mean, we're done with this question. What do you guys think? Once you start getting good with composite functions, you'll be able to spot out these cool little tricks. And that's what makes math fun. All right. So thank you so much for tuning in. I will see you guys all in the next lesson. Hit the like button if this video helped you. Um, and yeah, subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for that. That helps us out. And see you guys all in the next lesson. Have a great day. Bye-bye.